Hi guys, welcome to the day 7 of the 20 days of Power BI Challenge with Zakra Cleaning. Yesterday, you learned about creating conditional columns in Power Query. Today, we are going to be talking about data modeling in Power BI. We will be learning about what a data model is, the different types of data models, and finally, normalization versus denormalization. Now, in Power BI, data modeling forms the foundation for insightful analysis and stunning visualizations. Data modeling is the process of shaping raw data from various sources into a clean, structured format that enables effective data exploration and storytelling. So, think of data modeling as building a robust and well-organized information architecture before constructing an impressive building that is your reports and dashboards. On it. So, what exactly is a data model? What is a data model? A data model is a set of tables linked by relationships. We all know a table is a set of rows containing data with each row divided into columns. Each column has a data type and contains a single piece of information. We usually refer to a row in a table as a record. So tables are a convenient way to organize your data. Now by itself, a table is already a data model. A single table, although in its very simplest form. So when you create names and numbers in an Excel workbook, you are cre actually creating a data model. So if your data con if your data model contains many tables, they are likely linked through relationships. A relationship holds between two tables. When two tables are tied with a relationship, we say that they are related. So, a relationship graphically is represented by a line connecting the two tables. So, understanding the structure of data models can help you design the right model to support your reports and dashboards. So in other words, your data model is the foundation on which your reports and dashboards will be built. It involves a set of tables, creating a relationship between them and determining the kind of cardinality that is the type of relationship that should exist between the tables in your data model. Now, let's talk about the types of data models. In data warehousing, we refer to these models as schemas. We have three major schemas of data models. Number one is the star schema data model, which is the most popular and simplest to create. The star schema is very common modeling approach. 
where a central fact table is surrounded by multiple dimension tables, all connected through relationships. So imagine a star with all the corners of the star being the dimension tables. And at the center, you have the fact table, which we are going to get to very shortly. The snowflake schema, on the other hand, is where the dimension tables themselves have further dimension tables. That is, in, in, in the snowflake schema, there is a sort of hierarchical structure, just like a snowflake. And finally, we have the Galaxy Schema Data Model. This is an extension of the star schema because it has multiple fact tables, shared dimension tables. So just think of the um, Galaxy Schema Model as star schemas but with multiple fact tables. So in other words, you can imagine several star schemas with multiple fact tables and shared dimension tables. It is also called a constellation schema or fact constellation schema. Now, for the purpose of our lesson today, we're going to be focusing more on the star schema which is the most popular and simplest form of data model in power bi or generally so as i said before the star schema is an approach where you have a central fact table containing transaction or event data so the fact table is more or less the central table containing data that has the capacity to change or grow in size over time and is surrounded by the dimension tables. The dimension tables provide context and attributes okay so you can see from the diagram here you have your fact table in this, at the center of the star while dimension tables surround the fact table the dimension table can also be called the lookup tables so this is where information about entities business entities uh, will be like probably location customer information, products, um, and other information about your data can be found. So, let's dig a little bit deeper. When we say dimension tables, what exactly do we mean? All right. So, dimension tables describe entities. That is the things that you model. Okay. Entities can include products, people, places, and concepts, including even time itself. Yes. Later on, you will learn about creating date tables for your data model. So, the most constant table you will find in the star schema is actually a date dimension table. A dimension table contains a key column that is a unique identifier. If you're familiar with SQL, you know you you probably have heard about primary and foreign key. So that is a column that contains unique values and serves as the identity of that particular dimension table. It is that column or that key that will be used to create relationships with other tables in your model. What about the fact table? Your fact table stores observations, 
or events and can be contain data like sales orders, stock balances, exchange rates, temperatures, and so on and so forth. The fact table contains dimension key columns. That is, rather than have a single table with very large number of columns, you have a reduced number of columns where and containing keys from the dimension table. So for instance, rather than have uh, products in a particular table, uh, product type, category, subcategory, product name, and so on, we, we create a separate dimension table for products containing product ID, that is the key, and then link the key to the fact table. So if a, a fact table contains key columns, and the key columns determine the dimensionality of a fact table, while the dimension key values determine the granularity of a fact table. So generally, dimension tables contain a relatively small number of rows. They are also static, they rarely change. While fact tables, on the other hand, can contain a very large number of rows and it will continue to grow over time. So the next thing we are going to talk about is the concept of normalization and denormalization. What is normalization? Normalization refers to data that is stored in a way that reduces repetitive data. Later on in this lesson, I will show you what a denormalized and normalized data looks like. On the other hand, denormalization is when data is stored beyond the key. That is, the full information about all entities in data is stored in one table. So most times when you move data from one single bloated table to several dimension tables leads to a fact table, what you have done is you have normalized the data. Normalizing your data has several benefits. They include enhanced analysis. So the models help you to effectively explore and analyze data relationship to uncover hidden patterns. Another benefit is accurate and reliable results. And faster query performance. So, when you create data models, you optimize data storage and retrieval. So, this in turn results in quicker response times when working with large data sets. Remember that in Power BI, because it's a self service tool and it's a in a way, no code tool. Most of the queries are being run in the background or at the background of the software. So it is very important to model your data in a way that will enhance the speed of the queries being run in the background. Modeling your data also helps you to write quality and effective data analysis expression that is DAX. So, by mastering data modeling, you unlock the true potential of Power BI and empower yourself to make data driven decisions with confidence. See you in the next tutorial. Until then, don't forget to like this video, 
hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell to get updates on new videos, and share this video with your friends. Bye for now.